In this tutorial in X particles, hopefully the first of many, I will attempt to give you a good head start on branching and the XP branch modifier. Because as you know, knows man knows X particles, or so you think. In an empty Cinema 4D scene, let's create a simple XP emitter. And I'm going to go to the object which controls the main parameters of the emitter, and I'm going to change the width and height to one centimeter so that I get a smaller emission area. Now, if I press play, you will see a lot of particles going that way, and that is not what I want to do. I need to go to the emission tab, set the emission mode to shot, and now I want to shoot one particle at frame one, and that's just about it. Now, just in case you missed it, it was somewhere here. And because it's not very visible, let's go to our display, and let's change the editor display to circles filled, and rewind, press play, and there you go, that's my particle. And I need to make sure that my emission uh, is correct and that the particle has a full lifespan, which means it's going to go on and on in a straight line forever. Number one, I need to add a trail. I want to be able to see where this particle uh, passed through. So I'm going to add a trail. So let's go here and let's go to generators and let's get what's called an XP trail. And the XP trail, it takes the emitter. If there's no emitter here, just drag the emitter and it's going to draw a line, as you can see, on the particle path. Fantastic. Let me extend my scene to 450 frames. And let's do this and now we can see this particle going that way and uh, it says full scene trail we just need to rewind once and play it again and now you will see that this particle will just go on forever and leave a line behind it so now that i have this straight line i want to start branching from it and the way to do that is to use the branch modifier so let's go to modifiers let's go to generate because it's going to generate something new and the first one is the xp branch now what i'm going to do is just rewind press play and you will see that now this particle just goes on for a few frames let's rewind and see how long it lives for when it stops i'm going to press stop there you go so it's uh, around 90 frames and uh, let's go and investigate i'll just pull it down here and uh see some of the parameters here in the attributes manager so the general tab has all these things it's enabled and so forth what we're interested in is the length method and currently it's set to time so what happens here is that this one particle that's been emitted has been now fully controlled by the xp branch and it applies these parameters to it so it's going to give it some sort of lifetime and uh, although the particle doesn't die in the end, it just creates a branch only for this amount of time. And I say create branch, although there doesn't seem to be any branching around here, because you have to imagine this one path as the first branch. It's like the trunk of the tree or the main vessel or vein where everything is going to stem from. So essentially, this is a one and only branch coming from this point here. So this is our main branch. Now I want to make it live for a longer time. So I'm going to set this to 450, which is the length of our scene. Now if I press rewind and press play, now you will see that will go on for the length of our scene. And you can see that it's changing direction. This change of direction comes from the next set of attributes. What this does is it bends, which means it changes direction, every five frames with a variation of zero. We won't touch this for now. And it's going to have a maximum bend of five degrees and a minimum bend of zero degrees. So every five frames, it will make a decision and it's going to turn in a direction which is between zero and five degrees of its original direction. Let me show you what that means. I'm going to set this to 90, and I'm going to set this to 90. And I'm going to rewind, go very close here, and start advancing. One, 
two, three, four, five. On frame six or seven, it will change direction now. And now it doesn't go at 90 degrees exactly, but it tries to. So five frames later, it's going to change direction again. And five frames later, it's going to change direction again, and so forth. So if I rewind and press play, you will see this changing directions erratically. And this is because every five frames, it changes this direction. Now, there are a couple of things here. The natural is what you see here. And the zigzag is a zigzag, which is quite interesting for other kinds of effects. We're going to leave it at natural and continue with what we're doing. Now, I don't want this to uh, change direction. I want it to go in a straight line, but I want it to remain a branch. So all I have to do is just set the maximum and minimum to zero. So if I rewind now, you will see that the particle goes in a straight line. Excellent. So our first branch, which is basically the first branch, and the main branch is ready. How do I add more branching now? Well, now you go to the branching tab of the XP branch, and you say add branch object. Currently, because there are no branch objects, all these are great. When I click on this, we get a object and XP sub branch, which is a child of the original one, which has the object properties, which are equivalent to the properties in the general tab, and it has the branching properties, which are equivalent to the branching attributes. So let's go to this little guy here. Let's rewind, press play, and see what happens here. And you can see that it's generating branches as it goes along. And because it's very hard to see where our original particle is and what these new particles, these new branches are, I'm going to do something which is quite helpful. I'm going to create a visualization method by grouping my particles. So let's go and create an XP group. I'm going to call this original. I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to call this branch1. Excellent. So I'm going to leave this to be green. I'm going to set this to be our filled circle. And everything else, I'm going to leave it at default. I'm going to take branch number one, and let's uh, make this a circle but not filled, and let's change the color to something like blue. Excellent. Now, how do I set these up? Well, first of all, I need to tell the emitter in the groups to create particles in the first group. And then I need to tell the XP sub branch to create a group. And we go to the object tab and we drag the group in here. Now, if I rewind and press play, you will see that the first particle is green. We can follow it visually and the other ones are blue. Fantastic. We can let this run. And because I don't want it to loop, what I'm going to do is stop the animation, go to the animate and say play mode simple. So now when it gets to the end, it's going to stop. And there you have it. We have this fantastic object. And I could stop the tutorial here, but I think there are a few more interesting things we can talk about. So what are these branches? What exactly happened here? So this is the point where a lot of people may get confused. When I select the sub branch, I can only control its length, minimum and maximum, what kind of bending it's going to do, and which group it's going to be in. There's nowhere to control when this branch is going to be created. We will find this in the parent branch, in the branching. Why is this the case? Well, here's what happens. In terms of when a branch will be generated, that is a parameter of the branch that owns it. That is the generator branch. So this guy needs to create the new branch. And after it's created, then this little guy, which is now born, it's generated, will take over and do whatever it needs to do. But because the generation of a branch belongs, so to speak, to the parent because before it's born, this doesn't exist. The branch doesn't exist. So that's why the parent needs to take care of certain things relating to the branching. 
So it says branch in five frames. Okay, so we know that every five frames is going to branch. Let's go down here and test this one more time. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, and sometimes one more. And you can see now we have that generated or birthed branch. So another five or six frames, another one. So every five frames approximately, we get a new branch. And it says number of branches. This is how many branches it's going to do every time it spawns a new branch. And here is the maximum number of branches it can generate over the lifetime of generations for this particular sub-branch. So if I say two here and rewind and press play, you will see that two branches are going to be created every five frames. Now, another thing I can do is say, OK, I want to generate three particles every five frames, but I don't want to exceed 10 particles altogether, or 10 branches. When I'm referring to particles here, please, it's the same as referring to branches, because basically these branches are just the derivative of a particle moving. So forgive me if I use weird terminology. There you go. And although this particle still moves on, these have stopped generating. So let's see what happens here. And again, it says maximum branches. So I apologize again, not maximum particles, branches. So what we can do here is count the particle. So let's go to the emitter. Let's go to the display and activate the head up display. And you'll see we have 31 particles. And just so that you know, these 31 particles, let's go back to the parent object, are a result of the following. This is one, so the other 30 are the three branches per spawn times 10. So we have 10 branches, and each branch has three spawns. So 10 times 3, 30 plus 1, 31. So this is how these are calculated. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the branches to 1, uh, the maximum branches. I'm going to leave it at, I don't know, maybe 1,000. And I'm going to say the maximum branch deviation, what I'm going to do, the deviation has to do with the angle it's going to spawn out of. So I'm going to make this 90, and I'm going to make the minimum branch 90 as well. So now what's going to happen is that it's going to create a branch at 90 degrees every five frames. Bonk, 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 bonk. There you go. And that is the the uh, initial the initial angle. After it has been spawned, after the branch has grown, then we can control the parameters from the XB subbranch. So here we set the length of each of the branches. So I'm going to make it 20 frames. And we have minimum and maximum length if we want them to uh, have a varied length. I'm going to tell it to bend 0 and 0. And now these are going to be perfectly straight without any deviation. Fantastic. So now we understand that the parameters that belong to this sub-branch are the ones after the branch has started growing. And anything that has to do with this sub-branch before it grows, so the method of growing and the timing and all that, will be controlled by its parent. So let's follow the same rule and set up another sub-branch. After we select it, we need to go in the branching group and add a branch object. Because we're adding it to the sub-branch 1, I'm going to add it here. It becomes a child. So again, how these branches are going to be generated are controlled by the parent. So I want them generated every one frame. And I want them to have zero deviation. And I want to have one branch every one frame. And the reason I'm doing this, it's easier to see what's going on. And then we're going to go to this one and tell it that the length should be, let's say, five frames and it won't bend at all. And now if we rewind, go closer and press play. The reason this is happening is that in the parent branch, when the S is 
being generated, I set the max branch deviation and min branch deviation to zero degrees. So that means that the new branches are aligned to the parent. I need to set this to 90 and 90. And now it's going to work as expected. There you go. So we're getting these third branches. And to make it easier to see, I'm going to select this and make a copy, name it particle 2, and set this subbranch to generate in particle 2, and just select it and change the color to something like pink. So rewind, press play, and now we can see exactly what's going on. And this looks like growing crystals or something like that, which I really like, by the way. Fantastic. So what do we do from this point onwards? Because this is a procedural system, because everything is generated based on the parent, we can just change the first particle, and this will become much more interesting. So let's go here, let's go to the general, the parameters that control the actual branch, and we're going to set this to be, let's say, 10 degrees... I'm going to actually make it bigger, so 30 degrees and 15. And I'm going to rewind and press play. And now you will see that or even though all the other parameters are the same, we're getting a very interesting setup. And of course, you should always remember that because of the generation of these branches relies on X particles, any kind of modification you add to your X particles emitter that will control how these are going to be generated. And just to close this off, I'm going to give you a very, very simple example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a motion attractor. I'm going to move it over here and set the force to 300 and see what happens. Now, if I rewind and press play, you will see that the particle has a tendency of following this. So now... I can animate this, and my branches are going to follow. Now, all the groups now are following this, all branches. If I don't want to do that, all I have to do is go to Groups Affected and say, I only want the original particle to be affected. So now, we're affecting the direction of the growth, but not the branching. And I hope that this little experiment inspires you to do really nice growth effects and play around with follow surface and follow splines and whatnot and create really nice Christmas trees. Finally, and uh, this is the real finally, if you want to render these, you just render and nothing happens. So you can save yourselves from a lot of embarrassment. But if you do want to be embarrassed, just go create, go to shader and get up X particles material, drag it on your XB trail, and voila, everything gets rendered. Furthermore, if you want to mesh this and so forth, that is the subject for another tutorial. I hope you found this helpful, and if you make anything interesting, keep it to yourselves, please. Don't forget to watch all the other incredible videos on Insidium by 3D Fluff, Hello Lux, Brograph, um, who am I forgetting now, iDesign, School of Motion, and I always forget someone, I don't know who that one is. So yeah, um, it's, uh, the weather's getting better here in uh, Toronto, yeah, it's uh, 35 degrees Celsius.